flying Lanfear Lions looked unstoppable last night. Iguodala and McBride dunking their way to the semis. The Orphans of Centralia assured themselves of trophy number 173. Will it be solid gold? We'll find out next. tournament continues with game number two of the semifinals between the Lanfear Lions and the Centralia Orphans. Both teams defeated their quarterfinal opponents by over 10 points. Centralia beating Moline by 14 and Lanfear defeating Thornwood by 16 points. Now the winner of this game will advance to the state championship game tonight against Westinghouse. Which team will it be? We will soon find out. For more on how these two teams match up this afternoon. Here are your announcers, Dave Bernhard and Doug Altenberger. Thank you very much, Lisa. And you know, Doug, it seems like we were just standing here not too long ago. And in fact, these two teams behind us were doing that very same thing. 17 hours ago or less, these two teams were playing. What an impact would that have today? Well, we look at Lanfear. They play with that up tempo, that full court pressure. They're basically going to play if they get the three games here in less than 24 hours. And the question is, can they hold up that kind of pressure? And then, on the other hand, Centralia, it seems like the team that plays the latest game on Friday, they come back shortly. That team seems to be, you know, running on empty a little bit. So it's interesting to see the bench, the key, the depth, and these guys stepping up. Craig Patton talked about it with Lanfear. It's not just those two All-Staters, it's the rest of the team. That's how you win a state championship. And to get to a state championship semifinal game, this is how you have to go as far as Centralia is concerned. They needed a shot from Lance Markham with three to send that Belleville East game into overtime before they won it. Of course, after disposing of Belleville West, the Orphans annihilated East St. Louis. And of course, as Lisa mentioned, defeating Moline last night, they trailed briefly in the third quarter before pulling out to that 14-point win. For Lanfear in the sectional final, they pulled away from Mount Zion in the fourth quarter, and then in the super section of Illinois State University had to hang on against Pekin. And of course, yesterday they opened up several eyes in this Carver Arena with the really the domination they had over Thornwood. So here we are in the semifinal game. Now these teams, of course, will bring out standing players. Today we'd like to feature a young one and an experienced one. First of all, the young one, he comes from Centralia, Lance Markham. Yeah, and he's a guy here that, that they need him really to handle the pressure. And there's a guy where, where not only is going to worry about scoring so much, a terrific three-point shooter. He's a guy that can really stroke it from outside. So he's another guy that uh, guard-wise, that's going to be the key for Centralia, how their guards handle that pressure. You know, we say young because he started since he's a freshman. This guy here has really jumped up. He's ranked the top 10 in the nation, Andre Iguodala. And what I like about him is he's a complete basketball player. Don't worry about the points. It's the assists. Eight assists. He really sets up his guys, looks for the open guy. So a very difficult guy to double-team. He'll make you pay the price. We saw an interesting matchup in game number one of course Westinghouse really defeating New Trier soundly we've got some interesting things going on here as well how about the keys to today's game well the keys for today first of all we're going to go with uh, Centralia press what press they got to handle that pressure they all know that but they've got to attack the All-Staters you want to be very aggressive try to get them in foul trouble and let it go if they can hit a couple three-pointers ease up that defense loosen up that's a key for them and then for Lamphier Greg Patton talked about one of the things he didn't like about Thorne was they really didn't finish the break as well as they like to. They got to defend behind the three-point line, and they got to be very concerned about foul troubles. He's talked about it all year. So far, they've done a good job all year of staying out of foul trouble. Centralia made their way up here from Southern Illinois. They are expected to do more than just be happy to be here. Well, they're happy they are now in the state semifinals, but they'll have to face the state's second-ranked team coming into the postseason. That's the Springfield Lanfear Lions. Both of these two teams are on a mission, much like Westinghouse. The intensity here starts to build at Carver Arena. We are just about ready to go. Standing by courtside is our public address announcer here at Carver Arena, Paul Herzog, and he will bring you today's starting lineups. Good afternoon, basketball fans. On behalf of the Illinois High School Association of the City of Peoria, welcome to America's Original March Madness here in Carver Arena. Today's semifinal game features the Centralia Orphans and the Lions of Springfield Lanfear. 
Let's meet the starting lineups. At a forward for Springfield, a 6-1 senior. Number 11, Caleb Edson. At a forward for Lanfear, 6-6 senior, 41, Andre Iguodala. forward for the orphans a 66 sophomore 34 Matt Shaw to the forward for the Lions a 63 senior 50 Nikos Scott at center for Centralia 66 senior 54 John Smith One of three guards for Lanfear, a 6'1 senior, 21, Tony Smith. And a guard for the Orphans, a 6'2 senior, number four, Lance Marco. A guard for the Lions, a 5'9 junior, 23, Adamala Adonigi. Third guard for the Orphans, a 5'10 senior. 10, Brian Dickelman. And the third guard for the Lions, a 6'3 junior, 33, Richard McBride. Head coach for Central. Lampier Lions and the Centralia Orphans. The Orphans coached by Rick Moss. He has made his way from Highland St. Paul to Vandalia to Argo High School. He made a stop at the University of Iowa and then to Centralia. Very successful coach of the 462 wins in his career. And on the other side, Craig Patton. He too started out at a small school, Hartsburg Emden, before going to Crete Money. He has been at Lanfear for nine years, a 158 and 92 record overall. Craig Patton with 236 wins in 16 years of head coaching experience. Last night, Centralia came out and they blistered Moline early, Doug, drilling from the outside. They came out with a lot of confidence, even having to wait to play that fourth quarter final. And, and one of the concerns that Coach Moss has is that they did have some turnovers in the first half, and uh, maybe that was nervousness or nerves, and uh, uh, they've got to be very careful here initially to really handle the basketball, and that allowed Moline to stay in there for a little bit, but then, they, like you said, then all of a sudden, that third and fourth quarter, they really stepped it up. As far as Lampier is concerned, they came out, forced 20 turnovers off a very good Thornwood club, including 13 in the first half. Now, can they keep up that same sort of pace today? Remember, Lampier will only go five, maybe six players deep. Foul trouble would be a concern. We will keep an eye on fatigue as this day rolls along. Andre Godala, number 41, standing in the half-court circle here at Carver Arena, the home of the Bradley Braves. You get a look at the first-team All-Stater. Some say he may be the best high school player in the country. He'll go up against a sophomore, six foot six inch, Matt Shaw. And the Orphans will start it. We'll check out the early matchups. It's Tony Smith on Lance Markham. Markham lets it fly with the lob and the score. Shaw. Shaw was able to dunk last night. This time he lays it in for the first bucket. That was a set play that they did right at, uh, they got the ball off the huddle and uh, executed perfectly. John Smith will knock it away. They tried to get the ball in then the post to Richard McBride. Along the sideline, Markham open. And here comes Adonigi. Adamola Adonigi leading the break. And he fouled offensively, a little bit out of control underneath the bucket. And Dave, that's very important that the guards for Centralia, they play with like a three guard setup. Edson, who they have guard forward, but he's only six foot one. So nice job getting back defensively. Lanfear really trying to push the ball. Got to have your guards check it back. For Lanfear, Ed Mola Edenigi, a junior, along with Richard McBride, the sophomore Matt Shaw for Centralia. Everybody else on the floor to start this game. Seniors, John Smith is one. Markham on a bounce into Shaw. Sophomore works on the senior and scores. Matt Shaw took it right into the face. He's, the all -stater. he's only a sophomore, but he's got some... Uh, He's got a lot of courage going against the, the All-Stater. One thing that Craig Patton, the head coach for Lampier, says, 
to Iguodala, he says, Andre, don't pick up any first quarter fouls. So if you see Iguodala playing soft in the first quarter, that would be a reason for it. That guy's never going to play soft. That's the other All-Stater on this team, Richard McBride. Nice, nice job of splitting the zone, the seams that coaches talk about. Here's the break. Mark in the and Dave, that's what you've got to do. You've got to be very aggressive. That initial, to get to that initial attack of Lanfear, then aggressively go the hole. You've got the numbers to be able to finish that shot off. Iguodala pulls up and bottoms it out. That is not unusual for Iguodala. He has made 36 three-pointers coming into this tournament. Cable Elson. Edson uses a dribble, and here comes Iguodala. He was flying. Andre Iguodala scored a perfect 50 points in a slam dunk competition. He has withdrawn for that because of the status of his team right now, but he put a show on right there. That's finishing the break. And that's the break. Making two just inside the stripe for Caleb Edson. Well, I think he just won the slam dunk competition. I'm voting for him, and he, uh, the, I give him a, a 10 on that hang time. Nico Scott inside. That's a strong young man that's fouled. The scoreboard clock here at Carver Arena, maybe they were pausing to admire the slam from Iguodala, was temporarily on pause. I'm not sure if anybody has picked it up. Now, Rick Moss in front of the scorer's table asking about it, I believe. But at the line is Nico Scott. I think we all got enamored with that, that slam dunk. Even the, the timekeeper thought, wow. <laughs> Anthony Jones will come in to replace Caleb Edson. Jones last night off the bench with 11 points. Nico Scott, I talked to his football coach. I was in the March Madness experience this morning with my children, and he came up to me, and uh, he said, this guy, you should see him play football. He's a running back, and uh, he's got, in the 40, he's got 4.5 second speed. I mean, this guy's, I told him, I said, I haven't seen too many basketball players with his explosive ability. I mean, this guy gets up and down the court like nobody. Six foot three, 210 pounds. Here are our officials today, Michael Bromley, William Jones Jr., and Kevin White. They're working the state semifinals. Congratulations to those men. That's an unforced turnover unless you talk about mentally working on you. All tied up. Coming up the five-minute mark here of quarter number one. Well, it's very important when you go against a press that you get your space and everybody gets to the right spot because a team like Lanfear, if you get a little disorganized out there, guys in the wrong spot, they're really overplaying double team and try to go for that steal. Iguodala on the way to the bucket. He is fouled. Going against Anthony Jones. The Centralia will come out with a 2 3 zone, but a lot of times it looks like a man because it's more of a matchup zone. And it's important for Lanfear to try to figure that, throw a guy through the lane and see if there, it's more of a zone or man to man. Right now it looks obviously like a man to man. McBride working top of the key. And he too is fouled. And, and Dave, when they go man to man, that's going to be hard for Centralia because they really don't have the athletes or the quickness to stay up with Lanfear. So he's, uh, Rick Moss is probably going to change his defenses a little bit, go back to man-to-man, -man, go to zone. I like the zone because make these guys beat you from the outside, even though they're a terrific outside shooting team. Lobbing to Iguodala, chance for a three-point play. Well, the Lions look a lot sharper offensively against Thornwood. Uh, I thought their defense really carried them in the game, especially the first couple quarters. But here, offense, offense, uh, offensively, uh, much more successful, shooting much better from the field. Uh, oh, they haven't missed a shot so far. Can't do much better than that from the free throw line. Iguodala finishes the three-point play. He has eight points. We have a timeout on the floor. To remind you that this IHSA broadcast is brought to you by Country Insurance and Financial Services. Real people, real answers, real quick. Are you going to make that call? When you call Country Insurance and Financial Services, the unexpected will happen. Hello, thank you for calling Country. Hello? 
business. You actually talk to a real person. I didn't think you'd answer this quickly. Country Insurance and Financial Services. Real people, real answers, real quick. This is my country. With Doug Altenberger, I'm Dave Bernard. Happy you've joined us here for the second semifinal here on Championship Day in the state of Illinois. Westinghouse High School out of the city of Chicago is awaiting the winner of this one as we take a look at the Marion High School Band. They are our pep band today and it's Springfield Lampier cheerleaders. Pretty happy to be here along with that guy right there. There he is, Attitude. Well, both these teams are playing with an attitude. You saw that score, 11 to eight. We've still almost got uh, five minutes to go in this game. So offensively, both teams have come out on fire. Take a look at the offensive numbers overall. Lampier averages 78 points per game. Centralia 63. The defense for Centralia has been outstanding in the tournament. They've allowed an average of only 37 points since this state tournament began. There's a steal by Adoniji. He goes hard again, and that's his second offensive foul on identical plays. Adeniging here, he gets the number, he thinks he's got the angle, Shaw gets over there, questionable call there on Shaw, but see the official really didn't have a very good angle like, from his perspective, probably looked like he did have positioning, but looked like he was still moving. So Adeniji will have a seat on the Lanfear bench, replaced by sophomore Tyler Klunik. So you get that ball in the middle on the press, a lot of things starting to open up, good read by Centralia so far with the pressure. Traveling call, whistle against John Smith. Smith's brother Josh played last year for Centralia on their 24 and 14, but just before the regional last year, his brother Josh chipped a bone in his right ankle, was unable to play, and the Orphans were eliminated early. Rick Moss thought that that team had a chance to get to Peoria. Iguodala, he has an early 10 point number behind his name, 10 of Lanfear's 13. Kuna gets a hand on the ball. Iguodala in the season, 23.5 points per game. These two teams have met before in a semifinal in state tournament back on March 23rd, 1963. Centralia got the better of the Lions on that one, 50 to 46. And that, by the way, the first year that the tournament was played at Assembly Hall in Champaign. Centralia did not win the state championship, as we see Jones scoring. That championship was won by Carver. Very Amazing finish, Anthony Smedley off the bench to hit a game-winning shot for Carver. That's amazing, the assembly hall was built in 1960. It seems like it was built yesterday, very modern architect. Richard McBride drills it for three. Well, these guys are just on fire, you know, they must have taken it personally, they didn't shoot very well, and the gets Thornwood. But... Markham, here we go. This is more of an NBA game than a, than a high school game. How about this shooting? Lampier, six of seven. Centralia, six of eight from the field. We still have over three minutes to play in the first quarter. Not happy with the pass from Smith inside Iguodala. Got caught in the baseline. Boy, Iguodala, I mean, he what great vision. He knows the backside, weak side help comes over there, and he doesn't, you know, steps out of bounds, but great effort and great vision. Very smart player on the floor. Here's Smith on the break. And that's what you've got to do when you get behind that defense. Stay aggressive, and Centralia's done a good job. Make them pay the price when they try to make a steal. You've got a couple of teams coming out here playing some ball right now. Scott, size mismatch, shovels inside. Sophomore Shaw gets it. Ahead to Jones. Two more. That's a good idea, you see. The Lions, Lampier, really compressing their offense, looking for that offensive rebound and that breakout. Centralia sees it, they're releasing the guy, and nice job by Jones again to get behind the defense. Tyler Klunick running the offense. Klunick only averages about two and a half points per game. He's playing time basically when somebody else is in ball trouble. Miss a little bit long from Iguodala. Mark him inside for the rebound. Yeah, nice rebound. Nice block out on Smith. Looking inside. Tough spot to be for Smith, and he gets it up. 
Yeah, for some reason, Markham came over there, brought his man over there. The trailer is McBride. The follow to Scott. Boy, they get a steal, and they just fly that basketball. I mean, they just fly down the court. Dinkelman, he had nine assists last night. The win over Moline gives it up to Markham. Tough pass. Scott running the floor. Little carelessness on Nico Scott's part. And McBride, I think, was starting to load up before he had it. Well, it's amazing that Centralia has, I don't know if this is right, seven turnovers already. It didn't seem like they've had that many, but the game's such a fast pace, I guess that's correct. Still have a minute 38 to play here in the first quarter. 33 points on the board. We'd like to thank all the great people at Old Chicago. They're providing some great food for our production crew. You know, at Old Chicago, they've got great pizzas, pasta, and more. Now, you got to fly, get some Old Chicago to go. You know, what's really great about it here in Peoria, right along the riverfront. Uh, get yourself on down there. You can watch these IHSA games, NCAA games. All right. Thanks to Old Chicago. I'll bet you a few of those Centralia fans made it to Old Chicago today. They'd like to go home with the victory. I don't know, if, Doug, I don't know if we can keep this pace up for another uh, three-plus quarters here, but this has been entertaining. Hey, why not? Well, I mean, this is fun doing it. <laughs> you and I can keep up the pace. I think we can. We're not going 90 feet <laughs> up and down the floor. It's easy for us. Now, Anthony Jones, 5'11", senior with it. Now, first quarter, I mean, with uh, both teams offensively really coming out aggressive. Markham wide open. Drill. We're tied at 18. Right, gets there in a oh, hurry. That's a tough shot. Okay, both teams are making making the plays right now. Seven points for McBride, ten for Iguodala. They had Shaw there, scooted away a little bit. So what I like about Centralia, they're getting the ball on the blocks. I mean, even though they're hitting the three-point, you're getting that inside-outside action. So uh, they've, they've got some easy buckets. And that increases your confidence, and they've been able to hit some on the perimeter, too. Centralia winners of nine of their last ten. Now, they really kind of struggled coming into the postseason. They lost four of their last nine regular season games, but it's a pretty good time to pick up the base. Yeah, you wouldn't know it by the way they're playing right now. They have been considered Southern Illinois' best team the entire season. They're matched up against their Central Illinois foe, the Lions from Lanfear. In the game is Jason Palmer. He hands off to Markham. Clock winding down. Pressure coming out. Jones came from the backcourt. That's at least what Lampier coaches thought. Anthony Jones goes to the rack. Shaw, a little bit ragged right here. Jason Palmer. He's fouled with 1.4 seconds left on the clock. Well, that was really a break for Centralia. They were really out of rhythm. Richard McBride picks up his first foul. Yeah, that was, uh, like you said, Dave, they almost got, uh, they looked very ragged on that possession. And uh, not only do they uh, get to the free throw line, but they get McBride with his first foul. So, very fortunate for Centralia. Balance scoring here in the first quarter for Centralia. Six players have reached the scoring column. Yesterday, they had four players in double figures in that win over Moline. This free throw for the tie for Palmer. A whistle on the inbounds. And then say there was a violation inbounding the ball. 1.2 seconds left on the clock. And here come the big guys back in. <laughs> Rick Moss took everybody out for these final 1.4. But if they get the ball back, there's some offense. <laughs> you heard Paul Herzog in the background saying there's a line change coming on for Centralia. We are the in the home of the Peoria Rivermen, the hockey league team here. So you, now you have Shaw and Smith inside. 1.2 seconds left here in the quarter. Markham the catch. 
And the foul will go against Tony Smith. We are not in a shooting situation, but that's certainly something that come into play later. Rick Moss asking for a shot. I don't know about that. I think he might be fishing. Oh, wait a minute. They're going to send him to the line. Markham is there. No, they're trying to trick him. All right. So Trey doesn't get away with it. Moss says, what the heck? I gave it a shot. Hey, what a great first quarter. We are tied at 20. The Orphans and the Lions. And we'll be back to Carver Arena after these words from your local station. Doug Altenberger, I'm Dave Bernhardt. Also joining us is Lisa Prati. Let's go to Lisa now. Dave, I have Richard McBride's mother, Bernadine, here. And this is exciting for you to be here at this tournament. But talk a little bit about how your son is prepared for this season. He's been here before. It's not like it's his first time. He won back-to-back -back, uh, junior high school. And he's used to playing a hard physical game. So I'm glad to see him here, and I know he's happy to be here. Now, I understand that you, you don't do a lot of talking in between these games from last night till today, but he does like to see you. Yes, yes. He always has to see his mother, at least before the game starts. We don't do a lot of talking about what he's going to do and how he's going to perform. He just goes out there and plays his game. You can understand why he'd want to see his mom. Back to you, Dave. Indeed, Lisa. His mom's going to like to see him and his performance here early. Here comes McBride. Gives up Smith. Offensive foul. And that will be number two on Tony Smith. So the two starting guards for Lanfear have two fouls apiece. Adeniji and Smith. Craig Patton originally here was getting Adeniji back off the bench. He had second thoughts. And instead, he'll bring in the sophomore Terrell Pearson. And Jones does a nice job of establishing himself, taking that charge. The officiating crew is going to right now you as a player you've got to adjust to that they're going to give that charge so when you go in there out of control so Charlie's going to take that charge you got to go straight up don't float in and they'll, they'll slip right in there first quarter numbers centralia eight of ten from the field lampier eight of twelve both teams in the first quarter of their 20 points 10 came in the paint biggest lead of this game has been six that was lampier's lead and of course we're locked up at 20 right now Edson in the corner, gives off Dinkelman. Moving the ball nicely around the zone. Working some time off the clock. Pearson at the point. He will be guarding Dinkelman. Nice bounce inside. We'll stay at this end. Well, good patience by Centralia. They finally get what they want on, on the box with Shaw and Smith going up against him. Smith does a nice job of not drawing uh, the fouler, whereas Shaw was really trying to draw that contract, get to the free throw line. He does a good job. Once he gets the ball inside, a good finisher, and he loves to get to the free throw line. The Orphans 26 and 5 on the season. It's been a great schedule, as has every team that's been down here. The final four have all played outstanding schedules. That's what got caught in the air, got a little break there to finding Marcus. And the left here bands like what's happening here. They're denying the shots. In fact, denying shot opportunities. We play two minutes here into the second quarter. No score after a blistering first quarter. Markham a little out of control. And we're still down at this end. 
They, typically, when you see a team like Lamphere that plays a lot of full court press, they give up easy baskets, but you see the discipline they have on the defensive half court, really staying at home, good help defense, guy gets broken down, someone's margin. Two big free throws from Iguodala, 22 points for the big man. He's right near his season's average. And the lead now is back to seven. Remember, it was a two-point lamp your lead if Centralio had the ball before a five-second call. Stop that chance. Markham, long range. That's the same sort of play they ran when Shaw and Smith were both the ball game at the same time. I, I think those guys out there panicked a little bit. They could have gotten that shot anytime. I would have been much more patient uh, offensively, and uh, you don't need those quick shots before that, uh, you know, last time down they shot a real quick three-pointer. They don't need that yet. See what Lampier's thoughts are right now, whether they'd like to burn some clock. We talk about all the turnovers, Doug. Neither team has really capitalized on them. Each team with only four points off of turnovers. Uh, and Dave, that's a good point. Lampier really lives off that, and uh, they've had to really adjust their game plan against Centralia. One and one now for Lampier. That's a 19 foul after this. Every foul will result in a pair of free throws for the Lions. And that's maybe one reason why McBride and Iguodala, you know, offensively are the ones that uh, have got 40 of the 50 points, is that when they get into that half-court set, those guys seem to be a little bit more their guys to go to, and Centralia really having a hard time matching up with those guys, especially with Shaw getting his, his fifth foul, getting in foul trouble and then fouling out of the game. And Amola Adeniji comes up short on the front end of the one and one. Two minutes left. Two minutes. Two minutes remaining. Here comes the break. Too much. <laughs> you should see the coaching staff for Lanfear right now. They are all scratching their heads. And there, here you see the turnover. Uh, story right there, but uh, like you said, a lot of those turnovers have, have, have ever resulted to a lot of points. And whereas against Thornwood, Lamphere was able to convert a lot of that into uh, into baskets. Here's Jones. Nice move for the score. Jones with 10 points off the bench, keeping his team alive. We're down to 90 seconds. They'll go after Adeniji. He missed that free throw moments ago. On the season, Adeniji is 70% free throw shooter. Make sure you stick around immediately following this semifinal game, the slam dunk in class double-A. Iguodala is scheduled to compete. He has withdrawn, but tell you right now you're going to see some outstanding athletes had a chance to be here Thursday night and watch the preliminaries of that you are in for a treat stick around immediately following this ball game well Dave and I have most of the votes and we just voted him as the uh, as the winner so I know they're gonna have it afterwards but uh, we have the final say right now at an the defensive specialist missing both free throws well the orphans still have life Oh, that was a, not a smart foul there by the Ralph Stater. Centralia not yet in the bonus. In fact, they will take the next foul to put them to the line. Well, when you're down by five, two plus three equals five, three plus two equals five. The bottom line, though, I believe Centralia here has to knock down a three. They have not been as successful as they would hope to be. Only two made three-pointers here today. Smith the trouble, five second count. Nope, the timeout beats it. Centralia uses their final timeout. It comes with 112 to play in this game. This I just say broadcast is brought to you by Country Insurance and Financial Services. Real people, real answers, real quick. Are you gonna make that call? When you call Country Insurance and Financial Services, the 
unexpected will happen. Hello, thank you for calling. Country. Hello? Business. You'll actually talk to a real person. I didn't think you'd answer this quickly. Country insurance and financial services. Real people, real answers, real quick. This is my country. Redco Supply Corporation and Owens Corning, makers of vinyl siding and shingles, are proud to be sponsors of this year's Illinois High School Association State Basketball Tournament, the home of America's original March Madness. The best of luck to the Lamphere Lions and the Orphans from Centralia. Well, Dave, Dave, right now, they're down by five, Centralia. They, you know, they don't need to go for the three fight yet. They can get the two. And uh, I look for Anthony Jones, really get him back in the game and make him penetrate, make something happen. And uh, if not, uh, you're going to look for Markham or Dinkelman or Edson, any of those guys to shoot the three. But they've really struggled behind the three-point line here. Markham hit two threes in the first quarter and nothing since then. In fact, they've only had three three-point attempts since the first quarter. Markham into the paint. Smith. John Smith can't get it to crawl in. Well, that's the way you can get three, too. And, and now, if you make these free throws, and you're Rick Moss, you want to come down, and play good, solid defense for a while. Maybe try to overplay, look for that steal. Maybe even come out with a little full court press. Try to surprise Lamphere. Smith has really struggled from the free throw line today. That's just his second made free throw in six attempts. And that was a big one right there. Jamal Palmer comes in, replaces Markham, and that will be for defensive purposes here on this next possession. Six foot six inch senior. Knocks them both down. 50 to 47. Dangerous pass. Iguodala with it. I mean, there's an example where Centralia does everything right on the press. Ball looks like it's going out of bounds, and the big fella, <laughs> it disguise out of nowhere, all six foot seven of them, and is able to get that thing. So they do everything right. Almost they almost throw it out of bounds, and he gets to the free throw line. There's some things you just can't coach against. The lead stays at three. There's a big bucket right here. He makes this one. It's a two-possession game. He misses it. A three ties it all up. Off offensive unit back in for Centralia. He set it a four-point difference. 51-47 under a minute to play. Rebound to McBride off the miss from Jones. Clock stops, 46.1. Shooting two with a four-point lead. Well, one thing Lamphere's done great today is one shot and out. Uh, they're out rebounding Centralia, 32 to 15, and uh, that's just uh, those are those are just some huge numbers rebounding wise. And both Iguodala and uh, and Scott uh, got 10 apiece. I love Scott. You know, Nico Scott. I mean, he's a guy who doesn't get a lot of credit. But well, I don't think anybody works harder out there than that guy. Talk about somebody that just has to dedicate himself to being a role player when you have the marquee players alongside. Boy, that is incredible, those rebounding numbers. And yet you look at the scoreboard, Centralia only down by four, now five. Now they have to hurry. Spot in the cha state championship game at stake. Jones beats Kunick to the hole. Remember, Centralia is out of timeouts. Scott to Iguodala. Patton has his best free throw shooters on the floor. Who do you foul? They're forced to foul McBride. Richard McBride today, three of four from the line on the season. He is an 80% free throw shooter. The guy they had they want to foul is Scott, but uh, he never really touched it. And uh, Iguodala did a good job staying with it. He's probably the best free throw shooter on the team and Ora McBride. Did a nice job on that free throw to stay with it. Didn't give up on it. Just got it over the top, over the uh, front edge of the rim. 
Now they'll bring Adeniji back in, Lanfear will, to play a little defense here in the final 19 seconds. A four-point difference, five, 21 points for McBride. Three-pointer, nope. Rebound Smith, and count it! They're not going away, 11.1 seconds left. Just when you think it's over, they come back. Now Rick Moss, a little concerned. It was after that last free throw that was made by McBride. I, I wonder whether he had some problem with the clock. I'm not sure. Well, they, they've had a problem all weekend with this clock. Nico Scott has just fouled out. It's very interesting. They had some time. Remember, it lapsed on the clock That's earlier, right. and uh, it's given Centralia a little extra life. Ooh, we just had nearly a, an unfortunate situation for Lanfear. They want to bring Terrell Pearson into the ball game. Pearson just ran off the bench, and he was had to go into the game without checking in at the scores table. Technical foul at this stage is not what you want. And still, there's a dispute at the scores table. Evidently, it is not, definitely not being resolved to Rick Moss's satisfaction. that after that free throw by McBride, the clock started a little too soon. Remember, they rolled the ball up the floor. Two-point game, quick foul, 10.4 seconds. Boy, right now, if you're Craig Patton, you call a timeout, collect oh. your guys, and... I don't know. Because, uh, you know, one thing you don't want to do is have your guys not prepared if he misses these free throws. Make sure that you're well prepared defensively what they're going to throw at you. Well, and because there's all these different situations, it will be a two, a three, or a four-point difference. That certainly affects what you will do defensively. And as you can see, they have elected to not send anybody into the lane. Well, these kids are high school kids. They're not NBA guys. Right now, I'm real concerned about Craig Pat. Maybe, maybe even call a timeout. And, well, you don't want to freeze your guy up there, but... Lampier has made only six of 12 free throws here in the last three minutes of this game. It's a three-point game. Well, if I'm Centralia, I want the ball in this guy's hands right here. Make something happen. Jones. Edson. Oh! Rebound Iguodala. Oh, and how close can you come if you're Caleb Edson? That thing looked good all the way there. Wow, that looked dead on. And you see Rick Moss just can't believe it that it didn't go in. One here from Iguodala would do it. Oh, these kids from Centralia, just not over yet. Well, <laughs> it's amazing. You see the time on the clock. You see the point differential. It's simple mathematics. And you can get a shot off at 1.5 seconds, 1.9 seconds, no problem. Now there's a problem for Centralia. One last gasp. And Springfield Lampier will be taking on Westinghouse in the boys' double-A state basketball championship. 56-52, your final score. The jacket from Craig Patton came off with about two minutes left. <laughs> oh, and I'll bet you he wishes he could have taken off more in his last 30 seconds. What a thrilling finish, and what a character check shown by Centralia. Uh, it was a grueling game for Lamphere. They just couldn't get enough. Centralia kept coming back, and Rick Moss has just got to be so proud of his guys, the Orphans. They, they played their hearts off. Talk about two teams that went toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Remember, Centralia trailed by 12 at one point. Battled back and was right there until that very last free throw by Iguodala goes down. And how interesting it would have been had Caleb Edson's three gone down to tie this game. Great finish here in the second semifinals. 
Springfield Lampier stretches their mark to 32 and 1. Let's check in now with Lisa Prati. I'm here with Coach Patton and Coach. Congratulations, but those last few minutes there, very heated, not what you anticipated. Yeah, those missed free throws made things interesting, didn't it? So uh, that's all right. We hit a couple there at the end, and we had to do what to do to stop them there. Well, your team does a great job of finding one another underneath the basket, and that basically was one of the keys for you tonight. It was. Uh, had a lot of double teams out on the top. Richard and Andre, especially Nichols and Tony, moving in from the base, weren't able to see the open shot. So you move now into the state championship game against Westinghouse. How much do you know about Westinghouse and their play? We've played them earlier in the Christmas time, and the play was a very close game. We have to win the game. I think it was 76-71 or 77-71. They're a lot quicker than we are. They're stronger than we are. Uh, I don't know. We're going to have to shoot the ball very well and move the basketball well to beat them. Hey, thanks, Coach. Also next to me is Richard McBride. He is the country insurance player of the game. You had 21 points, six rebounds in this game. Talk a little bit about your performance as well as your teams against Centralia. Uh, I just wanted to come out and attack the basket and look for my shot, play aggressively, aggressively basically, just play my game. Well, you definitely have a great matchup with uh, Iguodala. You guys find each other very well underneath the basket. Your play definitely showed tonight in uh, against Centralia. Yeah, I've been playing with him for a long, long time. He's a very good player, very good athlete. I'm going to miss playing with him next year. Well, what do you know about Westinghouse? You play them in the state championship game tonight. Uh, they hit the boards real hard, and they're very, they have very quick guards. So we're just going to have to contain them on the boards and contain their guards and get a, put a hand up on their shots, and we should be fine. Now, obviously, you're very tired after this game and playing Centralia in those last final minutes. It was a lot of intensity. How do you come back into that state championship game and played with just as much intensity against Westinghouse? Uh, right now, for to go to the hotel and go to sleep and drink a lot of fluids, so I should be ready by then. Okay, Richard McBride with Landfair is the player of the game for Country Insurance. Dave, back to you. Well, Richard's going to take a quick nap because he has less than six hours to make it happen when he comes back for the state championship game. There is your final score in the boys' double-A semifinals. Lamphere 56, Centralia 52, Iguodala and McBride, the two All-Staters, combining for 46 of those 56 points. We still have a lot more coming up here from Carver Arena. We are not done, but we'll take a break and be back after these words from your local station. Welcome back to Carver Arena. We are at the after the last semifinal game between Lanfear and Centralia. Lanfear is going to be playing Westinghouse in the state championship game. They beat Centralia 56 to 52. That was a tough, tough second game there. It went right down to the wire. Uh, you know, you think when you look at things, you think, well, Lanfear has the advantage athletically, but whenever you're talking about state championships, it's always whoever plays more like a team and you can't uh, you know with a few exceptions it's hard to rule anybody out. Well, It was an intense game and I think we're going to see just as intense a game against Westinghouse later on tonight but we have the slam dunk competition taking place now and uh, the one disappointing thing which it, that you can completely understand is that Andre Iguodala t withdrew himself from the slam dunk contest. He actually scored a perfect 50 on Thursday night but you can obviously understand why. Yeah. He. Uh... <laughs> I mean, one one turn of the ankle and he's out. You know, you just can't you can't risk it. I mean, it sounds silly because it's only 45 seconds, but you can't risk it. Our first uh, competitor is uh, up, up and away. Mike McKinney, 6'3", junior from Evanston. And he makes his first dunk. He had 43 points on Thursday in the preliminary dunking. 
having a little trouble throwing it down there. Evanston finished 22 and six this year, Lisa. Uh, they lost to Niles Notre Dame in the sectionals after winning the Central Suburban Conference. So he's averaging 14 points a game, and he actually, if you noticed out here, there is like standing room only. Have you noticed nobody has left the arena? No, there's. Uh, it's a great crowd. My son's even here with the neighbors. I mean, all the little kids, big kids, adults, they all want to see what goes on in the dunk competition. All right, well, let's find out what point he received for this. I think, as my father would say, he got what the little boy shot at, nothing. Tough one for Mike McKinney. Damian Mason now an All-Stater from Aurora West. Yes, very familiar with West Aurora. His head coach is Gordy Kirkman. They made it all the way into the Super Sectional, lost the game to Glenbard North, who then lost the game to Westinghouse in the first round of the quarterfinals. His uh, T-shirt, it says Star Child. He's like, you're not going to say that, are you? I'm like, well, sure. Who gave you the nickname? Oh! And it was his teammates. They gave him the nickname Star Child. He's only been at West Aurora for a couple of years, moved there from Kansas City. Oh, now he's waving on. He wants some more emotion from the crowd. Oh, between the legs. Now, Andre Iguodala made that the other night in the prelims, and that was sweet. That was a good try by Damien. I tried to get him to give me a little, you know, what's coming up, what's coming up. Well, you just have to wait and see. He didn't want to give it away, and he can't get the between the legs dunk to go. Well, he actually made second team all conference this year for the Upstate 8 Conference, but he's done a wonderful job. I think he's really happy with himself. Maybe not happy about the last two dunks that uh, he was trying to make, but uh, definitely overall did a fantastic job. And our last one up here is Brian Randall. He is a 6'7 junior from Peoria, Notre Dame. I'm sure you're very familiar with. Uh, Brian Randall is uh, one of the best players to come out of Peoria. Uh, he's definitely one of the best players this year. Brian, uh, from my alma mater, I went to Spalding High School. They combined with Bergen, who uh, went to the Class A state championship game in 1980. And to make Peoria Notre Dame and Brian is uh, he's got he gave me his list Illinois Kentucky North Carolina Notre Dame Kansas Michigan Iowa and Michigan State just to name a few just to name a few he says his, he and his coach are going to whittle that down now his coach is Mike Bonzik who played on the great Thornridge team back in 1972 with Quinn Buckner for Ron Ferguson uh, one of the legendary teams and that's a nice windmill there by Brian Randall. Uh, by the way, nobody on my Spalding Irish team could do that. <laughs> that's just that's just brutal honesty. What a great showing. I think that's going to be our champion right there, Brian Randall, here on the home floor. And I think we're just waiting to see now. The judges have all congregated over into one section there, trying to figure out who will be the king of the slam dunk competition for the year 2002. <laughs> upset there. Wow. Ryan Randall 43 points. Damian Mason had. Damian Mason had 44. So Damian Mason, our winner for the slam dunk competition. He will go ahead and advance to the championship round against the winner from the single A. It'll be in between the third place game and the championship game later on tonight. And we're going to try and get a brief interview here with Damian Mason from West Aurora. As I mentioned earlier, had a disappointment in the super sectionals against Glenbard North. They were hoping to advance to play Westinghouse in the quarterfinals, but I was just saying, you guys had a disappointing loss against Glenbard North in the super sectionals. What happened in that game? Um, we had a mental, we, we mentally broke down that game. We, we I think we were looking uh, ahead to going downstate. We weren't really ready to come out here and play, come out there and play. You know, they came out and they played great and they had the game of their life. And, they, you know, they, they deserve to get downstate because of the way we play in the Super Sectional. But next year, I mean, we got we to blow this one off. Next year, we got to come back stronger. And we know what it takes to get down here now. And we're going to have to come back and show that, you know, um, show everybody that we deserve to be down here this year, even though we didn't. And we're definitely going to be here next year. Well, you had a fantastic performance in your slam dunk competition. How does it feel to now advance to tonight's uh, to figure out whether or not you are going to be the king here for the slam dunk competition? Well, I mean, I hope I have, any, I hope I have legs left. I mean, between the legs, I couldn't even get between my legs for a second. I mean, I was so tired, but I mean, it's, it's a great feeling. You know, I came out here last year and kind of got nervous. Right. And, you know, it didn't even get, I got zero on the first round. So, I mean, but this year, you know, I was more relaxed, just 
you know, just go out there and just have fun. I really didn't practice, really didn't prepare anything. I just wanted to go out there and have fun. Are we going to do something different? Are we going to see some other different kind of dunks tonight so we have a lot to look forward to? Because you know a lot of people are not going to be leaving this arena. Well, I'm going you know, to try to show everybody something. You know, I have something I've been waiting to do for a long time. You know, I'm going to try to get it out tonight. But I'm going to show everybody something, though. All right, Damian Mason won for the Class AA. He will advance tonight against the winner of the Class Single A. And as you saw, as he just mentioned, he definitely has something to show us tonight. So we have something to look forward to. We have a lot more to come, but after this break, we'll be back right here at Carver Arena for the IHSA Television Network. We'll be right back. You just saw the slam dunk competition for the class single A. Damon West, I'm sorry, from West Aurora, Damian Mason will be competing again. Jason Fisher for the King of the Hill in between the third place and the championship game. So make sure that you come back and join us later on tonight at 630 for the third place game and right after that, the championship game between Lanfear and Westinghouse. So from Carver Arena, I'm Lisa Prati with the IHSA Television Network, and we'll see you later on tonight.
of the help. So Greg Patton's got to be pretty happy defensively right now with this series here the last couple times down, down the court. Anthony Jones back in. He has the ball right now. Jones, 5'11", inch junior. Made four of five shots in the win over Moline in the quarters. Open, Dinkelman. Finally, Lampier gets the ball going the other way. Springfield Lampier, you talk about your streaks. How about opening up the season, winning 19 straight, then the only loss, a five-point loss to Richwoods on January 26th. They follow that up with a 12-game win streak. Now, one of those wins, by the way, in those streaks, came against Westinghouse, the Pekin Holiday Tournament. Westinghouse acquiring first playing for the state championship. Big Wadala will go to the line. And you see Peoria Richwoods, everybody was anticipating that rematch in the super sectional. Limestone upsetting Bobby Darlings, his team, Peoria Richwoods, and then Beacon going in there. So Lanfear really tournament tested, like you said. They played a very difficult schedule. Andre Guadala is a high jumper. He can high jump six feet, 10 inches. How about that? A man 6'6", six, six, I can high jump 6'10". He's been compared in some regards to Darius Miles, not in terms of body stature necessarily, but in terms of the multiple tools that he brings to a game. Yeah, you know what I like about him? He reminds me of a lot of guy who I got drafted with, a guy named Scotty Pippen. And uh, does a lot of, doesn't do one thing great, but does a lot of good things, you know, really good. I mean, a lot of different things really well. And that's what impresses me about him. He's, not only a shooter, a rebounder, but an assist man and good a good defensive player. Pearson to inbound for the Lions. Iguodala's free throw gives Lampier that one point lead. Iguodala spins in the lane. The rebound to John Smith. They drop back defensively here. Remember, the two starting guards, Adonichi and Smith, on the bench with two personal fouls. Jones glides. Good job there by Dinkelman to disrupt the pass to Iguodala. We have a timeout on the floor. You know, after a 40-point first quarter, we've only had one point scored here in the second quarter. 21-20 the score, Lampier on top by a point. We'll be back to Carver Arena right after this. Are you going to make that call? Right. When you call Country Insurance and Financial Services, the unexpected will happen. Hello, thank you for calling Country. Hello? Business. You'll actually talk to a real person. I didn't think you'd answer this quickly. Country insurance and financial services. Real people, real answers, real quick. This is my country. Bradco Supply Corporation and Owens Corning, makers of vinyl siding and shingles, are proud to be sponsors of this year's Illinois High School Association State Basketball Tournament, the home of America's original March Madness. The best of luck to the Lanfear Lions and the Orphans from Centralia. Take a look at the Lanfear fans on the other side. You know, we, the Lions, that's a pretty easy nickname to work with, right? Lanfear Lions. How about the Orphans, Doug? How, how does a team get a nickname by way of the Orphans? Well, it came back in 1937. Now, Centralia was playing in the Pontiac Holiday Tournament. Of course, that's one of the prestigious holiday tournaments. The team arrived, they started their warm-ups. Now, their warm-up suits were all kind of messed up. The jackets had no buttons. It just didn't look good. In fact, one Chicago sports writer the next day said that Centralia looked like orphans, but they sure could play basketball. And there you go, the orphans from Centralia. They're like Paul Harvey, the rest of the story. Everything you need to know <laughs> your way to the ISSA TV network. Oh, that's a great story. That story actually came by way of a gentleman that saw you in the March Madness experience. Yeah, he gave up, he gave, came up, and told, told us the story, gave me a little uh, little article here, and uh, it was fun walking around the March Madness experience. What a great setup they have here with the state tournament, and uh, I couldn't get my kids out of there. My little boy who's five years old, Kevin, he was crying, Dad, I don't want to leave. Oh, no. I don't want to leave. I said, I got to go work. So are they still there playing and you're here working? Yeah, we got Grandpa over there. Okay. We got a lot of people inside Carver Arena. 
And they see the miss coming off the shot of Caleb Edson. He had 11 points last night. He was 4 of 5 from the field. They found the big man. Right now, he's stealing He's stealing the dunk contest. <laughs> but he has really come out. I mean, he looked uh, offensively, didn't look as sharp, but right now, he he looks fresh like he's just ready to go. I mean, even though they, like we talked about, he played the game 17 hours ago, he looks well rested. 13 points for Iguodala. Three of them coming in this quarter, and that's the only points that we have had scored in this second quarter. Well, they're playing through their defense right now, really tightening down. They have different levels of defensive intensity they play at any one point in time. Screws are turned up a little bit here. Jamal Palmer into Palmer into the ball game. He has it. He gets it inside. The exchange did not quite come off. Well, right now they really miss Shaw out there. He's got two fouls. And uh, he's put Rick Moss has put him on the bench, but uh, they really miss him on the block. He gives them that extra scoring punch inside and uh, helps out big city John Smith. And you can see Lamphere really keen on him. Once he gets the ball, there's going to be a couple guys on him. Now Jordan Queen will come in for Centralia. Queen played just a couple of minutes last night, so you can see Rick Moss needing to get a couple of fresh legs into the game. You look at right there, Edson trying to catch his breath. Centralia scoreless here in the first five minutes of this second quarter. Iguodala, big jump step. There's an all-stater. He is manhandling Centralia right now. Yeah, he's just taking over. I mean, there, no one blocks him out. No one puts a body on him. And he just goes inside, gets his offensive rebound, and makes it look easy. Remember, Centralia burned the first couple of minutes here in this quarter, very patient. Now they're struggling to find that basket. Yeah, as much credit we give Lamphere for their full court defense. Right now, I'm very impressed with their half court defense. Their man to man is a mano a mano, showing no weakness. Smith inside, height advantage over Scott. Scott muscles him out of the way. The rebound inside by Queen, and he's fouled. Good rebound on the offensive side from Jordan oh, nice. Queen. Yeah, Scott does a nice job of just keeping his ground, doesn't get called for that first. Ball goes in. See how he keeps vertical, doesn't reach or anything. On an offensive rebound, some guys come over, and he gets called for the foul there. He easily could have gone to McBride. He really was the one that was reaching, but they give it to Scott. Five minutes and 46 seconds elapsed here in this quarter before Centralia scores by way of Queen's free throw. That's all they get. Well, they're giving us a little taste of both. They gave us the offensive taste. Now they're giving us the defensive taste here in the second quarter. If there's a man that should be in the bottom of the pile, it'd be Nico Scott, and he's right there, number 50, with the tackle. Boy, that's, that's hard for an official. When do we blow the whistle here with that ball just still kind of squirting around? And the orphans will have it. Yeah, no, no, neither team really had possession there finally towards the end. And the arrow points to Centralia. Centralia really needs to get going offensively. They've got to have someone step up. They had that nice ball goes inside, but right now they are really struggling trying to run their offense. Someone needs to step up and hit a jump shot with Shaw on the bench. Well, let me ask you this. Springfield in the first quarter dictated the pace. I mean, they're flying up and down the floor. It seemed to get Centralia in the, their rhythm offensively as well. Have we lost that because of Lanphier's decision to back off under pressure? Well, what's happened is Lanphier hasn't really made a lot of baskets, so they haven't been able to do a full court pressure. So they've had to go back and play defense. But right now, it's become more of a low scoring half court type game, which you think would favor Centralia finally to get the ball in the box. That was one of the few times that Smith was able to operate without a couple white jerseys all over him, but they were able to spread out Lamb here, so the big fellow gets to the free throw line. And so Trailer, once they get that ball in the box, they do have a good job of finishing it. See John Smith's numbers on the season, 12.4 average last night. Smith really had a down night, three points. And Rick Moss said, you know, if you'd have told me, we look at Craig Patton, Moss says, if you had told me that Smith and only three points. I'd have told you we weren't going to win that quarterfinal game. 
two misses from Smith. Now, man will keep an eye on. It's number 12 for Lampier. That's Terrell Pearson. He's been shaking his left wrist for a while. He'll get the pass right now. Doesn't affect his shooting with his right hand. Terrell Pearson knocks down the three, so maybe he's just playing possum for everybody. <laughs> uh, he's given his team a seven-point lead as we approach the one-minute mark. Yeah, big, big punch off the bench. Question mark against Lampier was their depth. Markham cannot find it. Lampier had an 8-1 run here in this quarter. Kickback to Iguodala. They're going to wipe it off. They're going to say he trailed it. It happens so fast, he goes in there, and uh, when you look at a guy with his his range, the, how long he plays, sometimes he surprises the official. I don't think he walked there. I think it was a nice spin move, and he flipped it off before the other foot got uh, touched the floor. Well, he's, he's just put on here a show here in the first half. It's been fun to watch. Centralia does not have a field goal in this quarter. If you're gonna win the state championship, it's defense. That's what gets you to the championship game and wins games. Your offense, you always can't predict how you're gonna come out offensively. The trailer would take a 30 second timeout to set up these final 23 seconds. Make sure you stay with us at the half. Have plenty coming up, stats, interviews, highlights, and a whole lot more. And of course, we tell you to make sure you come back here tonight, 6.30 p.m. Tonight here on the ISSA TV network, we'll have the third place game for you. New Trier will be taking on the loser of this ball game. That will be followed between, game, between games by the King of the Hill and the Slam Dunk Championships. We take a look at Lampier's history. They won the state championship back in 83 under head coach Bob Nyka. They've been here a few times. Last time they were here was back in 85 when they picked up a second place trophy. Looking for a bit more this year. The other side, Centralia, rich. What a rich history. Three state championships. 18, 22, and 42. Arthur Trout, the head coach for those. First appearance, 1909. I didn't even realize they invented the game. Of course, they were here a couple of years ago, actually about four years ago, but prior to that, it was a 35-year drought. Their fans are ready for some basketball in the Final Four right now. Yeah, 1942, the Dyke Edelman played at Illinois. Uh, they called it the Wonder Five. And Teddy Edelman, if you're watching the game, Dyke was a special guy who passed away this year, and uh, he's an Illinois legend, no question about it. Jones with the clock winding down. And that will end up for Centralia in the quarter could only manage one free throw on the other side. Lampier with eight points. Three from Terrell Pearson, the other five coming from Iguodala. So after a 40-point first quarter, just a nine-point second quarter, the bottom line, if you're a Lampier fan, is you're on top, 28 to 21, as the Lions head into the locker room ponder their halftime strategies. Probably more of the same. Let's now go to Lisa Prati. She's standing by with Craig Patton. I'm here with Coach Patton. And Coach, some of your players came out early with, in, with foul troubles, but you guys actually picked it up here in the last part of the second quarter. Right, we've really got to hammer them down on our half-court defense. They've got some big guys, strong guys down low. We've got to make sure we're not switching on that. They're trying to get some mismatch with some big guys and some smaller guys. So we've got to stay with their men and, and get position before they catch the basketball or else we're going to foul them. Okay, thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Back to you. Thank you very much, Lisa. Doug, we take a look very quickly at the difference in one quarter to another quarter, and, and I'm thinking right now is, okay, uh, what does Centralia have to be feeling right now? They have to be feeling great after the first eight minutes, and now a lot of question marks. Well, I thought that uh, uh, Matt, uh, Matt Shaw, when he got in foul trouble, got a second foul, that uh, Centralia became a different type of team out there, especially offensively. So they've got to get him back uh, involved uh, here in the third quarter, and uh, he's their go-to guy, it seems like, here offensively. He's had a great straight tournament, and, uh, you know, their first quarter they shot 80 percent and uh, now they're shooting 44 percent from the field so they really struggle they've they've got to go in there uh, rick moss and make some adjustments offensively i think defensively they've done a pretty good job we will pick it apart with numbers interviews and highlights but you have to stay right there we'll be back after these words from your local stations lampier on top by seven
Welcome back to Carver Arena. At the half right now, Lanfear in the lead, 28 to 21. And also joining me from Lanfear is the former head coach, Bob Nyka. Bob Nyka was the head coach for the 1983 state team that beat Peoria, 57 to 53. Talk a little bit about that experience in that particular game downstate. Well, we had played them in the uh, regular season a couple of times, and we played them probably for the last 30, 40 years at Lanfair. Plus, uh, uh, in, well, that was 1977. We also played them in a former student uh, or a fellow classmate of mine, coached at Peoria Central, Bruce Boyle. Then we played Chuck Bisher, was coaching in 83, and uh, it was a different type of game then. It was a lot slower than it is today. These kids just go up and down like a race car. Now at that time, it wasn't, you, I, I believe it wasn't considered a, a class A or a single A at the time. Was it just all across the board? It was just a regular, regular tournament. Right, just regular tournament, one class. And then back in, it was in 19, it was at 85 that uh, your team lost in the state championship game against Mont Carmel? Yeah, we had a player that got injured with six seconds to go in a semifinal game. So a kid named Paul Pipe, a cigar, so we ended up playing into double overtime against Mount Carmel and lost by two. So there is a great tradition at Lanfear. My understanding is that in the 60, 65 years uh, of the head coaches, there's actually only been a turnaround of four head coaches in that uh, time span. Yeah, in 1937, when the school opened, they had a coach for one year, and then a guy named Rollo Sorrells took over for 17 years, and then Arvin Lober took over for 21 years, and then I was there for 19, now Patton's on his ninth year. So they don't move out very quick there. And Arlen Lober, actually, you played for him, and then you succeeded him right after that. Right. Arlen came in 1953. I was a sophomore, and he was a sophomore coach for one year, and then he became varsity coach. But uh, it was Arlen Lober who really uh, instilled basketball in Lanfair High School. I don't know what it was in there, but uh, something happened when he came in, and it just turned things around completely. So what has the, the community atmosphere been just this past couple of weeks? Well, actually, at times, uh, I feel sorry for Coach Patton because I don't think there's a orange uh, shirt in this crowd here today that they, it won't be a, a losing season if Lanford doesn't win at all. And it's just too bad because they've got, got a great team, an outstanding team. And he's done a good job. In fact, the nine years he's been there, this year, they get the ball more inside, way more than they ever have. He kind of played a perimeter offense in the past. And this is an outstanding team this year. So when you th talk about the fact that there's only been really four, four different head coaches in the past 60, 65 years, do you think Coach Patton then has probably a long term also at Lanfear? It could be. I, I'd say it's possible. He's still a young man yet, and he could be around for a while. And he's had some great, great talent in the 90s there. I mean, really. In fact, uh, the year I left in 1993, we started. That was Victor Chuckadebe played for Illinois. We started four freshmen and a sophomore on a varsity, and they won 16 games. So, yeah, I mean, he had uh, had a bunch of good kids, but th this team this year is really outstanding. Now, do you personally try to come out to all the state championship games, regardless if Lanfear is here or not? Yeah, I try. I haven't. I missed a couple in the last nine years, but prior to that, I didn't think I missed one for 30 some years. <laughs> now, you said there's also many people in the crowd. You, there are still former head coaches that are, are here tonight watching this game. In fact, Arlen Lober sitting about two rows behind me now at this game today. He's at every game. He and I, and uh, he. He just doesn't, doesn't miss any. I think he's 78, 79 years old, and he still has a, the enthusiasm of a 60-year-old, I guess you'd say. Well, you had incredible players on your team with Ed Horton and Kevin Gamble. Talk a little bit about both of them. Well, both of them, when they came into high school, they were probably what you'd say pretty good prospects, but nothing outstanding. They both just developed tremendously over the four years. Gamble, halfway through his senior year, he became probably one of the best three or four basketball players in the state of Illinois. And from then on, it's history. He was, not only was he a good basketball player, Kevin Gamble is a superhuman being. He, there's just not a finer kid than him. Thank you very much. This is Bob Nyka. It's very nice to finally meet you. I've only heard great things about him from Lanfair High School. He was the head coach for the 1983 team. There is still yet more to come here at the half right now. Lanfair is in the lead 28-21. We'll be back with more from Carver Arena after these local messages.
Westinghouse awaits the winner of this semifinal game number two. And right now it's Springfield Lampier on top of Centralia by seven. We welcome you back along with Doug Altenberger. I'm Dave Bernhardt. And Doug, I'm sitting here. It really feels like as great as this game has been. I've seen two games in one already. Yeah, we've uh, sort of got a taste of uh, both sides offensively. Uh, both teams exploded. And in the second uh, second quarter, they slowed down. There you see the stats there. And uh, both teams really came out shooting, just scorching. But they slowed down. And uh, uh, especially Centralia, they shot 80% in the first quarter. Uh, rebounding, you see the edge. And Iguodala just really establishing himself inside. And Smith with his quickness, uh, the rebounding edge there. Turnovers. It's interesting because when Centralia turned the ball over more, they were more effective offensively. How do you figure that? Well, yeah, the, again, you, what you talked about, the fouls, you see turnovers. Turnovers was a key. Uh, the Lamphere uh, has 10 turnovers. I think it's backwards. I think Centralia's got 10, and, and uh, Lamphere's got eight. But the fouls, you see the fouls, eight for Lamphere, but the key there, though, only one foul between McBride and Iguodala, and that's a key for Greg Bat. Of course, two fouls each on the two guards for Lamphere as we take a look at individual score. Now, Rick Moss will tell you that Centralia will go as Lance Markham goes. He has six points. You only get eight points inside from Shaw and Smith. I think they need a bit more. And on the other side, of course, 22 of your 28 points coming from your two All-Staters. But that's the way it should be when you get to this level. Yeah, and it will be interesting here in the third quarter if Lanfear really tries to extend their defense. Because, Dave, like you talked about, when they did that, Centralia had a lot of success. But when they toned it down, went to the half-court defense, boy, Centralia really had a hard time running their offense. We've had highlights in the first half, and we'll have highlights coming up next. But first, we'll take a break here from Carver Arena and be back after these words from your local station. Lisa Friday standing by with the head coach of Centralia Orphans, Rick Moss. Lisa. Dave, yes, I'm here with Coach Moss. And Coach, your team definitely having problems defensively trying to stop Iguodala under the basket. Well, he's a ton. Now, we knew that coming in. He's a great player. He plays hard. And, and I, I kind of challenged our kids. we got to play a lot harder this half. If we don't, it's going to be a long 16 minutes. But our kids respond. We've been this way before. We held them to seven points there. The problem of it is uh, in that second quarter, the problem of it is we only scored one. So uh, we, we got to get after it and we got to stop him. There's no question. Okay, thanks. Coach Moss here with Centralia. Back to you, Dave. Thank you very much, Lisa. The first quarter could have been a highlight in itself. But here we run you through the first half highlights. Richard McBride showed his presence early. Yeah, and he was able, you know, a great three-point shooter, but uh, his force was felt inside, was able to get in the paint area. See Iguodala really with the steal, and he just takes off and uh, flushed that. And uh, But uh, he, he just exploded here. had 15 points. They looked for him for assists, but he stepped up with the scoring. And the big fella, John Smith, got some good looks and early on, but that seemed to tighten up in the second quarter. He didn't get that many good looks. And that could credit the Lamphere. There goes McBride again going inside and slashing to the bucket. And good recognition. Take what the defense gives you. And then Terrell Pearson finishes it off. The big three from the sophomore off the bench. And with that, Springfield Lamphere has themselves a 28-21 lead at the half. Well, those young ladies would like to play in the second game. We'll find out next. But first, you'll be back right after this timeout. This is my country. These are my people. This is the world I understand. It's not just talking about service. It's really knowing the people we serve. I know them like the back of my own hand. 
Country Insurance and Financial Services. Real people, real answers, real quick. Centralia scoring just one point in that second quarter, and one might ask, is that a record for the Elite Eight? No, actually back in 1973 in a semifinal game, West Aurora was scoreless against New Trier. Boy, that's tough. That's tough when you go in the locker room and you say, fellas, we did not make a field goal. That's what Rick Moss had to say. The Orphans fans kind of urging their team on. And I've got to believe, Doug, they have to get off to a good start here, a good solid start in the third quarter. Well, and, and I like what Coach Rick Moss said. He, I think, uh, and there's no question that their intensity level went down a couple of branches. There you see, the <laughs> South shall rise again. <laughs> you know, they've got the, an uphill battle here, but they've got to feel pretty good. They're only down by seven where I thought their star Shaw really didn't get a chance to get going and uh, it's important that they come back out and match that energy level that Lanfear really showed in the second quarter much more consistent and that's why they've got the seven point lead. And an EG back in the ball game Scott dropped down inside to Iguodala and he is fouled on the floor. So Tony Smith along with Adamola and Aniji back in the game. They have two fouls. McBride with one. No real serious foul trouble for either team. McBride with it outside. The junior All-Stater two consecutive years. They give him the shot. Long rebound to Smith. He's going to run it. And chasing it down from the backside is Iguodala. Yeah, Big John Smith. He's not going to win any foot races. Outrun uh, Iguodala or McBride, and he was fortunate he didn't get a, a turn the ball over there. Ball going out of bounds to Centralia. Dinkelman with it, Brian Dinkelman, the 5'10 senior. Markham, he had a couple of three pointers, and that was it in the first half. We talked about the keys of the game for Lamphere was guarding behind the three-point line, and they've done a terrific job. We get a walk called against Matt Shaw, six foot six inch sophomore, shuffles his feet. That was one of the keys to the season, Rick Moss thought. He said, you know, two of the keys are going to be our bench and the development of our sophomore. Well, all Smith did was, or Shaw did was come out of the box uh, with a 23.13 rebound effort in his first varsity game. Not bad. He's a great block by Shaw. Got right on top of the ball. Floater from Ananiji. The tip goes. Richard McBride will get credit for it. Right, and when you play that zone, you've really got to match up. No one gets him. He slashes to the board for the offensive rebound. Tough shot. Now we've got to bring it up. Ripped away by Smith. Here he comes. He picks up his third foul, yet the Lanphier bench says that's a good foul. It denied a sure two. Well, Coach Rick Moss not really happy with the big fella. He had Markham wide open, and he decided to take it up. And he's not real excited about Could He had an easy basket, basket instead to go to the free throw line. Want to push that ball up the court. Want to get that easy one. The tough time from the line. He's missed all three of his attempts today. Tyler Kluna comes back in, and replaces Ananichi. Smith making two thirds of his free throws on the season. He has one of four today. Five points on the day. Still an eight point lead for the Lions. Iguodala. Ball kept alive by Scott to McBride. He is so strong. McBride in double figures with the 11. And, and you think of McBride again, that three-point threat, but he right now, he's getting it done on the boards and, and in the paint. Biggest lead of the game is right now at 10. That's it, cut off nicely by McBride. Trying to free up the people along the baseline. Edson with it. In the blocks. Nice move from the sophomore. Matt Shaw had two early buckets. That's his first in a long time. That is the first field goal in a long time. 
Tony Smith, who had 21 points yesterday, misses. And the thing about Centralia, though, Dave, is they've got to really be patient on offense, get that ball inside. You see Shaw really hurting right now. Took a blow to the midsection, and he's really tugging on his shorts right now. Number 34, when you're going against those two All-Staters, you're only a sophomore, it wears on you. Markham fouled on the way up. And right now, you've got Smith, Adon Adoniji, and uh, Scott all got three fouls. For that last field goal by Matt Shaw, the Orphans went 10 minutes and 16 seconds without a basket. A couple of free throws, and they will be within six. Yeah, and good point, yeah, Dave, because here they go. They couldn't have played, I don't think, any worse offensively. Give Lanfear all the credit. But uh, if they could put some back-to-back, -back, some offensive series down there, get right back in this ball game. Two free throws from Markham. He has eight points into the game as Jason Palmer along with Anthony Jones for Centralia. Markham will have a seat. It's full court pressure. Nice to have a safety valve, stands 6-6. Here comes Iguodala. Gives it off to Smith, his first bucket of the day. That was easy. I mean, they played great defense. They lofted it. Iguodala, and he just brings it down again. Shows his his uh, his ability to do so many good things, and he can handle the rock and a nice assist to Smith. Anthony Jones, penetration, will not roll. McBride on the run. Stops, pops, scores. 14 points for McBride. 29 between he and Iguodala. And there's two All-Staters just taking the game over right there. Iguodala with the pressure, and McBride with the three. That lead was just a few moments ago with six, has now been pushed back to 11. Smith does not understand the call. He shuffled his feet. We have a timeout on the floor. We'll take a break. We'll be back to Carver Arena after these words from your local station. At Carver Arena, let's check in with Lisa Prati. Dave Centralia may be down right now, but the spirit is definitely still alive here. Chris Knapp, right next to me, hunted me down after last uh, after last night's game and said, "You have to come up into our section. We've got a lot of spirit up here, and you guys have done this throughout the entire season." At every road game, we go to every single game, all sectionals. We're best team, best fans. They have no, they have no shirts on. They actually have orphans spelled out on them, and I don't know if, if you guys are in order. Well, and or fans, we're the fans. They are the fans. They've got a great celebration going on up here, Dave. Back to you. Actually, Lisa, you were the end. I am it. I am it. <laughs> uh, I tell you what, that is one of the things, Doug, that is really great about this high school tournament, the way the fans have gotten involved in and what a great thing it is for the schools. Yeah, and the communities, everybody gets behind them, and it just seems like uh, well, that's what high school sports is supposed to do, bring communities together and uh, get them all on the same page. Iguodala goes high after the miss of Kuna. Nearly has a prayer answered. 
Iguodala now with eight rebounds to go with his 15 points. Yeah, it just seems like these two guys have just uh, have really been the difference maker so far in the game. Both of them combined for 29 points and 11 rebounds, and it just seems against Thornwood, they're asked to do some other different things. Rebounding defensively, but tonight, uh, today, offensively, they have really showed what uh, what they're capable of. And Centralia's really had a hard time matching up with them athletically. Well, that's borne out by the points in the paint. Lampier with 18 points in the paint. Centralia with 10, no points in the paint since the first quarter. Turnover will deny Lampier Lions an opportunity to increase that 12-point margin. Centralia, 82 points. They can rack it up. Against Mount Vernon, well, not quite as much. Just 32. They have 26 now. We've reached the midway point of the third quarter. And, and the tempo right now is more of Centralia. You would say that if this was a more lower scoring game, a team where more half court or oriented game, it would really favor the Orphans. But uh, the Lions have really done a great job, I think, uh, of showing a little different look. And uh, if you're Westinghouse right now, you've got to be like, wow, these guys can beat you full court and they can beat you half court. You know, if you just happened to tune us on you know, just a few minutes ago, you say, okay, 38 26, not a bad score, but we have to tell you. Centralia had 20 points at the end of the first quarter. This game was tied 20 to 20 after one. Jones goes glass. Quickly up ahead to Iguodala. Smith. Great job, Scott. Iguodala the finish. You give the two points to Iguodala, but you give the work ethic to Nico Scott. When you talk about work ethic, the, but one thing you look at to see how hard your team is working is the battle of the boards. And right now, Lanfear just pounding Centralia 23 to 8, the margin. And it's been an impressive showing. I mean, I mean they're doing it against this a pretty big lineup. You've got Shaw and Smith, both guys six foot six, 200 plus pounds. And right now, they're really struggling trying to put a body on somebody. Centralia with five losses in the season to go with their 26 wins. Final regular season rankings found the Orphans ranked 20th. And of course, is after losing four of their last nine regular season games. They came out here and stood toe to toe with Lampier in the first quarter, but the Lions have really kicked it up a notch. Martin to push the outside. Yeah, the discipline they're showing on defense right now, very impressive. Yeah, good fake inside by John Smith for his seventh point. Brad be very careful right there. He could have easily got a, a technical. And the officiating there, just official there, just showed good judgment and said, uh, "Well, he's just a little upset." And uh, but he's got to be uh, concerned about that. You don't want to don't want to show up the official. I'll get you in trouble real fast. A lot of people here watching you. In college, you would have got a tee that way. Red high tower in the Big Ten. <laughs> he wouldn't have flinched on that one. <laughs> He'll learn. He's still he's a junior. Hell, you really lose sight of that guy. You watch him out there. Right. He has the ball right now. Centralia now has cut that lead under double digits. And the turnover. Big possession here for the Orphans. Smith waits. But the Centralia just could hit a couple threes from the perimeter. Really, be a whole different ball game. Shaw goes up strong. It's a six-point game, and Greg Canton wants a timeout. Well, Doug, we were sitting here about 24 hours ago, a little less. I thought a similar situation was developing with Lanfear into the third quarter. We'll talk about that in just a second. Let's go to Lisa right now. Lisa. Dave, I had made a mention yesterday about speaking to Caleb Edson's mother or grandmother who said that they dedicated this season. That's why they're wearing the black stripe 
uh, on their jerseys because of Caleb Edson's grandfather as well as Terry Brown. But one thing that they did not make a mention of is the fact that the season's also dedicated to Jason and Jamal Palmer's mother who passed away in January. So there's actually been a lot of heartbreak on this team and they just wanted to make sure that everybody knew that this season is dedicated to all of their family members who have passed away. Back to you, Dave. And that's one of those things where, you know, you band together as a team. There's more to life than just on the basketball floor. We talk about what's on the floor, though, Doug. I started to say what yesterday about this time at this juncture in the game. I thought that maybe Lampier may have run into a little lull in terms of maybe a little fatigue before they caught their second wind against Thornwood. I, I don't know. Has that happened here? Has Centralia just all of a sudden boosted their confidence a little bit? Well, we talked about depth, and uh, Centralia right now, you might, Lampier might get a little tired out there. And uh, they don't play a lot of guys, whereas Centralia last year, I mean, last night, uh, playing the late game, they might be getting a little bit more tired, but you'll see that uh, they did this against Moline where they struggled right. a little bit and all of a sudden, boom, they put in that extra gear. It's interesting to see if Centralia can do that again. Centralia has taken a 12 point lead down to six thanks to a 6 0 run. Go to a high post, look with Scott. Tony Smith lit it up last night. Oh. McBride the tip to Scott. You don't see that often. Yeah, not only does he get the rebound, but he spots him. And great offensive rebound with the, and, and good vision to hit that open guy all in one motion. Boy, wow. what a key play that was. And now nearly a turnover. Centralia will take a timeout, 20-second timeout to avoid the turnover. That play right there, just that little tip by McBride, could turn out to be a four-point play, the two that the Lions got and the two that Centralia may or may not get. And we talked about the difference makers. These guys are both All-Staters, and they just stepped up, and uh, they just seem to be making all the big plays. You know, if I'm you watching at home, I'm sitting right where I am, maybe grab something to eat alongside, because what we have coming up next, right after this, the boys' Class AA Finals, and that, of course, would be involved in the slam dunk competition. And then coming up tonight, we will have the double-A consolation game coming at 6.30, and then the state championship game. We will crown a state champion 2002. The Warriors from Westinghouse will be one team that is there. They are focused, and they are ready to win their first state championship. And one of these two teams, either Lampier or Centralia, will join them and expect you to join us as well right here in the IHSA Television Network. Lampier trying to hang on. Here's that play by McBride. Yeah, you see, no way they don't block out him out. And then, I mean, Smith is wide open there. And uh, it's just, you know, what I love about uh, Godala and McBride is, is that uh, they, they just see the court so well. They look for those open guys. And the rest of the guys, Smith and Adeniji and Scott, they know that. So when they get open, they anticipate that pass. They look for those guys to look for him. And uh, that's what makes Lamphere so tough. You know, they play as a team, although they've got some great talent in there. Uh, it's all within the team concept. You know, one of the great things about being able to televise these ball games, it gives the entire state an opportunity to actually see players that they've heard and read about all season long. Of course, the 12,000 people here at Carver Arena get to see them firsthand, and we enjoy you having us with us on this IHSA television network. That three ball went in and out for Markham. Flying up the floor. Didn't quite get enough spin off the glass. And that, that's just amazing. He gets that ball and just beats everybody down the court. And he's dribbling the basketball. I mean, you think of uh, Nico Scott, a guy who's got some great speed, 4.5 in the 40, as his football coach was telling me, in the March Madness experience. And uh, this guy just seems like he has no weakness today. Almost an 80% free throw shooter. Iguodala, high jump, 6'10", looking for his 20th point. Got it. 34 of the 44 Springfield Lampier points coming from the All-Staters, Richard McBride and Andre Iguodala. And then here's, here's the case yesterday, Tony Smith hits it for 21 in the quarterfinals. So, so you rely on your All-Staters, but then if you need somebody else, Lampier has shown with just one loss in the season that they're there ready to help out. Well, as Craig Patton said, if, if you're going to contend for the state championship, everybody's got to step up, take their turns, and 
today that uh, today it's the All-Staters and yesterday it was as he calls uh, Tony Smith it was the X Factor. Final shot of the quarter coming up for the Orphans. Jones to take it. They clear ahead. There's time here. Iguodala behind the line. Not this time. A seven-point lead goes to 10 at the end of three. It's Lanphier 44, Centralia 34 in the second semifinal game. The winner to meet Westinghouse. We've got that fourth quarter coming up, but first, we're back after these words from your local station. give you three seconds to pick out the most significant numbers <laughs> that you're looking at. One, two, three. That's right. 26-11 rebounds, but a big number that you don't see there is 13 of those 26 rebounds off the offensive glass. Yeah, and uh, Iguodala's got five of those, so, uh, you know, that's when you, you get out rebounded that much, lose a battle of the boards, it's hard, to, it's hard to stay in the game, and right now that's what uh, Lampier's built their 10-point lead on. Hard work. Markham got Terrell Pearson in the air, still finishes. They can have a couple of those come down here in the fourth quarter. They can really tighten this game up. If you're Lamphere, you've got to be pretty excited right now. You've got uh, Iguodala and, uh, and McBride with only one foul between the two of them. So you're in good shape if you're Craig Pat. Not that they haven't played aggressively already, but you do have that flexibility. Oh. <laughs> How about that? McBride has an open shot. Gives to Iguodala, who has a good look. And he just gets back to, Mer to McBride. Well, there's, there's an example of guys just being too unselfish. McBride really should have shot that shot, but uh, they're playing patty cake back to each other. And, okay, that's what makes this team so special. They really do make that extra pass. They've got a couple of all-staters, but they lead by example. Craig Patton was saying that he needed some space, and he did have three players packed right in there. McBride, Iguodala now. Looking inside, they want to clear out for Iguodala. You know, in the 30-year history of the AA tournament, only five teams have come from the final quarterfinal game of the day to come back and win a state championship. We play, you know, it's just so late in the day to play on Friday. Are we seeing a little bit here from Centralia now that maybe a little bit heavier late? Hi, Dave, that's been my thing, up feeling is that you play that late game on Friday, you see mom and dad after the game, uh, you go get something to eat, you get back to your hotel room, you're, you're, you're pumped up. I mean, you're not going to bed till 1 or 2 o'clock uh, in the morning. And you've got to turn around and play an early game uh, in the morning or, or, or early afternoon. And it just physically, I think the kids have a hard time turning around that quick, processing all that, and coming back out with the same energy. And I think that's hurt Centralia here. I think they, that first quarter, uh, they played at up-tempo, but they have really uh, have struggled uh, so far with their offensive. And that's the thing, the first things to go, when you get tired out there, it's not your defense, it's your offensive. The ability to score. And they've been forced to work so hard by this defense you're seeing right here that forces Rick Moss to call a timeout. Takes him at 6 11 to play here in the fourth quarter. His team within striking distance only down by eight at 44 36. There definitely is time here for the Orphans. But it's eight, but it feels like 16. Lisa Prati is working Carver Arena. Let's see if we can find her. Dave, I'm up here in Section 22 with Ed Horton. Ed played on the 83 state team for Lanfear, second place uh, back in 85, but he also played for the Clippers, the Bullets, and he also played in Europe professionally. And you do a lot of work, though, with the kids from Lanfear still today. Oh, pretty much. Like I said earlier, that me and all the kids are pretty, I pretty know all the kids pretty well and the coaching staff. And like I said earlier, all the fans around, I can still remember a lot of the fans from when I played. So it's a real good feeling. Is it just as exciting from back in 83 to see how the way the ball's being played now? Oh, it, it's pretty much the same, but you got a lot of a lot more great athletes coming up today, and 
you know, Iguodala is one of the great athletes I've seen in a long time, and and uh, we're really pushing for land fair, and let's hope they can get this victory. How tough is the competition in the, in the conference that land fair is in back when you were playing in 83 to what you're seeing now? Well, the conference has really grown. Just a lot of, you know, a lot of more kids coming to, uh, to play in those conferences, you know, because they're top conferences. And I think Lanford is one of those schools that, that's really trying to stay on top of those conferences. So hopefully we can do that here in, in the upcoming years. What do you think the key is in this game today that you're watching against Centralia? They just need to keep playing with how they've been playing all year. Uh, they've been very exciting. A, a, a bunch of great kids, and I mean, they really deserve it. I mean, uh, they really deserve it. Thanks, Ed. Ed Horton still coming to see all the games here for Landfear at the state tournament. Back to you, Dave. Well, Ed hopes that he can see the second game tonight. That'll be the state <laughs> championship game involving Landfear. But after that bucket by John Smith, all of a sudden things have tightened up substantially. Free throw here can make it a five-point game. And, and the key is the tempo. That's what's kept Centralia in the game. They've been able to slow down the game, compress it, and not allow Lampier to really get in that transition game. Rebound grabbed up by Smith. And as Portland, they've played offensively. They're in this game right now. And an opening for Jones! Anthony Jones explodes in the lane. We have a four-point game. Iguodala inside. Uh oh, what a move he put on. Didn't he? Able to finish that off. With good defense by Centralia. Here come the Orphans. Jason Palmer. If you're Rick Moss right now, you want to settle those troops down, get a good offensive series here, get a good look. Right, go inside right now. They go inside by way of Jones. Good quickness from the perimeter. He's fouled on the way there. Tyler Klunick with the personal foul. Team foul situation, four for Lampier, five for Centralia. Right now, I think Anthony Jones has really been a difference maker for Centralia. He's come off with those fresh legs, and he's been able to beat Lampier on the, on the dribble. He hasn't been able to always finish it off, but he has shown success driving to the hole. Finally get it in. Smith wins the race to the ball over Iguodala. Jones! And he's feeling it right now. He's throwing his fist in the air. And he did that against Adeniji right there. That was quick on quick. Lampier led by 12 at the 640 mark of the third quarter. Right now, Centralia could tie. And Dave, you talked about Lampier not having a lot of close games coming down to the fourth quarter. We'll see how they respond under the pressure. That's a five second call. Oh, and it comes at an inopportune time for the Orphans. So the opportunity to tie will pass by, at least momentarily. And Rick Moss really changing his, his guards around, really rotating fresh guys in, in and out. Put back in Palmer here going against Adam Gigi. Find McBride. Stops and scores. Rick Richard McBride. That was a huge bucket. It was the first of the quarter for Springfield. They and Lampier had gone four minutes without any points. Jones showing great quickness. Uh, a lot of contact there. Didn't get the call, but again, he's breaking everybody down. No one can contain him right now. Here comes McBride. <laughs> well, that's putting a stop to the play. Matt Shaw slapping that big foot on top of it. Anthony Jones gets a hand as he goes to the Centralia bench. He lit a spark here under the Orphans. Markham replaces him, but it's Lampier with the four-point lead looking to advance to the state championship ballgame. Holding foul on Markham. Yeah, Markham really having a hard time with the quickness out there 
and uh, he's really not played that Should, he's got 12 points in the game, but he has really sort of struggled sometimes with the quickness out there, especially on the defensive end. Smith, McBride, no shot. the seventh team foul on Centralia, but more significantly, that is the fifth foul on Matt Shaw. He is done. That's a big loss. Matt Shaw going to the bench. He leaves with eight points, but on the season, Shaw, 14.4 points per game. He leads him in scoring, leads him in rebounding. He'll have to watch the rest of this one. Yeah, they're going to miss his size at six foot six. They really don't have anybody else to bring off the bench that uh, has got his bulk. And uh, they come back with uh, Edson, who's 6'1", 165 pounds. So you see Rick Moss going with that three guard lineup with the big fella, John Smith, in the middle. You know, in fact, you could almost stretch that to a four guard lineup <laughs> yeah, with, with Markham say. out there. I, I couldn't see him. He's too skinny down there. I was looking for the guy. 170, all 175 pounds of him. 18 points for McBride. As Lampier weathered the storm. He scored the last four points in this game. Well, I'd like to see Jones get back in number 20 for Centralia. He really had a lot of success offensively. Markham. All oh, the way there. Good job. Good. Yep. And that's been there all, all most of the game that, that to the baseline they've been getting beat Lampier does and the help defense there Craig Patton just telling those guys you got to slide over there. you've got to provide some help if you're going to extend that defense someone's got to move around hard to the floor goes Markham and now he picks himself up and puts himself at the free throw line Jones back in just as Doug Altenberger requested. Gives him a little more size, actually, in addition to the quickness. Yeah, he uh, he's listed at 5'11, but he looks a little bigger than that. <laughs> uh, they're still growing. They're in high okay. school. <laughs> well, let's see if that turns out to be a big miss. Iguodala working on Smith. Turns it over. Jason Palmer on the run. Markham. Oh! Now ahead to Iguodala. Two on one. Scott, I think, was a little bit puzzled as to whether he wanted to go over top of the rim or come up a little bit short. They did not quite connect. They will send Andre Iguodala to the free throw line. Take a look. Right now, Lamphere really pushing the ball. I would have backed it back out. The clock is uh, what they've got to be concerned about. Not too much, obviously, the score, but they're going to get their looks. and They've got to get the free throw line and convert. But one of the things that's hurt them in this game is they've got 16 turnovers, and Centralia only has 11. Usually that's reversed. Lanfear is the one that forces a lot of turnovers, 20 a game against their opponents, and they only give it up 10 a game. So that's uh, almost a 2-1 to 